I, you don't want to say that. <laughs> We are now joined by number nine ranked UFC women's bantamweight, Marion Renault. Marion, thank you very much for joining us today. Having me. First questions will come from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hello, Marion. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, my first question, can you walk us through getting that call that you had tested positive and just that immediate aftermath that pushed back the fight? It was uh, it was about 7.30 that morning. They had called me, and I'm like, wait a minute. Nobody calls me from the UFC at 7.30 in the morning, and I'm like, this this is probably not good news. And I answered the phone, and unfortunately, I had tested for COVID, and my heart literally just dropped. I was, I was completely devastated because I had felt fine. I was just at a point where I was just like, God. So when I spoke with my manager, you know, because I ended up giving him a call, he's like, let's have a plan. Let's let them know, you know, hey, we want to fight here. We don't want to wait um, two months later. We want to fight about this date since you feel fine. So we were able to let them know, let the matchmakers know when we wanted to fight and set up something for us. So it was a good, it was, it was bad and then it was good. So here we are. Did you deal with any symptoms afterward or were you more asymptomatic? I was, I felt a little groggy the next day and I didn't, I wouldn't stay in the house. I was like, nope, I'm going to go out for a run. So I took my dogs, we went out for a run. And I think the, besides feeling groggy that day, I had no taste and smell, which was, dev I, that was terrible. I, not being able to taste or smell anything. And then when you did eat stuff, tasted sour like an orange. It just tasted like it was rotten. So I think that was one of the main symptoms that I got. When you have a situation like this, so same opponent, you did the whole camp, but now the fight gets moved back. What kind of things do you go back to work on in the gym? Because technically speaking, all the work was already done before the first fight day, right? So what was it to go back to train? We just stay on course. You know, we were set to peak at that time. So we come down slowly and then we try to re-engineer our camp to peak again. And so that's basically what we stayed on. We stayed on our timing. We stayed on um, our game plan and what we wanted to work on, you know, just for the most part, just staying sharp. I know you also work, obviously, as a teacher with more schools reopening. Uh, what's your situation? Are you seeing your students again soon? Or what? where is it at at the school you teach at? So before I flew out, we had an emergency meeting with a lot of the teachers and the administration, and they let us know that April 6th um, for the school that I work for, they, they were going to open it up. So all next week when I get back, it's gonna be all about planning and getting the, the kids back, but it's not to a regular schedule. I have about 40 kids in each one of my classes, and I'll only get to see 14 of them at a time. Um, the others will still remain on distance learning. So it's still kind of a weird situation. It's not idea but at least it's something to normalcy. Well, congratulations, certainly. I'm sure it's gonna be very nice to see everyone and just have that interaction again. Uh, Marion, I would be remiss if I don't ask this. It has not gone your way the last few fights. Quite simply, is this a back against the wall, do or die situation for your time in the UFC? You know, I've been told just to, you know, keep moving forward as a heptathlete or a collegiate heptathlete you know, you had seven events and two, in two days to do those seven events. And if you had a bad event, you could, that was something that you couldn't focus on because you had to gear up and get ready for the next event. So as I move forward, you know, not thinking, I, I see that they're back there. I see that those fights, they were, they were good fights um, and they did not go my way, but that's not something that I'm going to harp on and, hey, this one's all my do or die. I'm going into this fight with the same mentality. I have to get in there. I have to win. That's my job. So... I'm not focused too much on the previous fights. I got to let those go. I can't dwell on it. I got to let that pass go and just keep moving forward. Thank you, Marion, and best of luck. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Zach with UFC.com. Okay. Um, so obviously, oh. you have a, a Well, she was the fighter. 
champion, obviously, at 145. She's long, she's tall, she's lanky, she likes to clinch, and so, you know, that's kind of um, what we've seen from her. Say that again? I can barely hear you. Mm, I, I'd say, you know, during um, peak moments when either I'm moving forward on them or my back is up against the wall, I feel that um, things that we've done to drill in the past, I mean, they just kind of are put together in the spur of the moment. I'm always underrated and overlooked. I, it's, I honestly, until you said it, I wouldn't have known who was a favorite or not. It's not something that I look up. It's not something that I concern myself with just because I've always been the underdog. We'll go next to Jim Barcelone with the Miami Herald. Your line is open. Oh. Uh, thank you. I, I'm curious, as a teacher, what has it been like as a fighter and as a teacher? And are you like the cool teacher because you are a fighter with the students? I like to think I'm the cool teacher. I think um, they don't know what to think of me but just because I'm a little, I'm very animated. I'm very loud. I'm very in your face, let's go movement. So I sometimes when they look at me, they're like, God, you're drinking too much coffee, Miss Renault. I think you need to slow down on the coffee. And I'm like, that's just naturally me. So I like to think I'm the cool teacher. So she... <laughs> what has it been like for you being a part of UFC and continuing this journey? You know, it's I, I cannot complain. I feel that being a part of this journey has set me up for where m both myself and my husband are now in our lives, where we were able to open up our own gym and, you know, give, a, give back to our community, not only to the adults, but the kids in our community, especially during this time. So I feel that this journey has just opened so many doors. Our, my dots are starting to connect where they need to be. And, and if you would have asked me gosh, 15 years ago, if I foreseen this in my future, I was in a bad spot. I would have said, no, this, this has leveled me out, this movement, this whatever. Whatever God had planned for me, it, it's worked. And for this particular fight, who will be in your corner? Did you, do, did you have anyone different with your training team brought in for this fight or business as usual? Pretty much business as usual. We made a couple of adjustments with one of the corners, felt a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so I'll be joined with, by Michael Craddock, Jim West, and then also my husband, Armando Perez. All the best and thank you. Thank you very much, Marion. You're all set. Yeah, awesome.